am crafters happy morning to you i hope you're having a good start to your day um i want to thank my new subbies and um our numbers just keep growing which is fun to see um i i did get this request from a couple of subbies um it was uh, it sounds like a lot of fun her and her sister get together and they want crafting projects to do and she loved the file folder journal and she said would you do your tutorial on it so um i thought i would and forever any tutorial and this is just personal preference for me um i like to see what we're making first and um because it gives me a visual and so all my tutorials i always want to start with what we're doing and this was the one that I demonstrated um, for the swap over at Sophie's Notes. But this whole concept and idea can be used for um, anyone who wants to take some treasured memories, put them in a really unique format, and hand them down to a generation. Hand it down to your kids or your grandkids. And so they have a record and stories and photographs of maybe Aunt Martha or someone, who knows. But um, so anyway, lots of ideas um, and uses for this. So here um, I took out a lot of the contents just so you could kind of see the basic structure of, of this and what we're, what we're gonna be building now. I'm, I'm not going to be designing anything. Um, to me, a tutorial, just show me what I need to do and turn me loose and let me do it. So if you have any questions, please put them in comments or email me and I will get back to you if something wasn't clear. But hopefully, um, it, it really is a pretty easy concept to make. Didn't take a lot of time, which I loved. So let's get started. Um, you always wondered what is a great use for those cheapy file folders at Dollar Tree? Well, um, they're great for this because it doesn't matter how strong the file folder is because you'll be matting it with papers that will give it strength. So that's good. Don't spend a lot of money on file folders. Just go to the dollar store. Uh, this one was obviously coffee stained um, with the tablecloth over the top of it. Um, I believe I got these at a trace of sparkle um, in a kit that she had. So, um, but I've seen these other places on Etsy as well. So uh, they do make a great design or you might want to cover it yourself and do a, do a whole different design. So let's get started. So you take your file folder and you're going to open it up, flatten out the middle crease a little bit. That, that always helps. Now, you're going to notice there aren't very many measurements to this because it's kind of a feel-as-you-go kind of thing, which is how it was designed in the first place. Um, it doesn't really matter where the tabs are. You could do one in the middle, at the top, or the bottom. It, it doesn't matter. But you want to want to take each side, and you're going to want to start bending both sides toward the middle. Now, here's what you're going for. You don't want to make your edges meet because then you have no spine. What you want to do is you want to let it drop open about three eighths of an inch. And that's the size of the spine. So if you just let it open, let it fall. Let's see. And both sides don't have to be exactly even. Just come to the center, give yourself about a 3 8 opening, and then press. Press down one side, and press down the other. Okay. Now, you should have something that looks like a file folder with an opening, about a 3 8 opening, in the middle. Now, grab your scoreboard, 
And you don't really have to rescore that line again, but I like to just to get it exactly clean. And wherever you scored it, where we where you pressed it down, just go over it on your scoreboard. Now, I don't know what that measurement is for you. Um, file folders are different sizes and how you bent it could be a little bit different than mine, but mine is, looks like almost four and a half. So four, what, three eighths, I guess. Um, so I scored it once there. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna go in, in your scoreboard, you're gonna wanna go three clicks to the right. And that gives you another three eighths inch mark. And that's the new one you're gonna be scoring. Score it a couple of times here. All right, so you've got your one that you bent and you've rescored it. Then you moved over three eighths and scored a new score line, scored it again. Now, let's turn this around, do the same thing. Same thing on this side. Find where the score line is, the bent, I'm calling it the bent line that we bent first. Come all the way down and then count three, one, two, three. For this one, it comes to, you know, five and an eighth, but I don't know where that is for your file folder. It's just three eighths over. All right. So there's your score marks. You don't need your scoreboard anymore. Now, you're gonna come over here. Here's the line we originally scored on. Just lift up a little bit, find that second score line, and press down on that one. So now you should have one score line, two score line. There, you see how you just got your spine here? That's really just the spine marks is what we're making. All right, do the same thing on this side. You're gonna press the bent line and then come up and find that new score line and press on that. And now you've got your opening. Here, here is your opening. Now, you do have a choice on this, and there, there's gonna be some design choices for you on this. I don't know if you saw my last video where I introduced three of them. Um, two of them are in my Etsy shop. One of them, I left the height alone because the paper was so beautiful and tall. So I did uh, a tall one. Now, for this one, you can see the height difference is a little shorter. So what I did, I went ahead and um, for our um, tutorial, I went ahead and cut it down. And the height that I cut it to, I turned it around so that the flap was toward me. And I came up nine and three fourths and I cut it. So up here at the top, it's nine and three fourths inches is where you're gonna come across and you're gonna cut. That'll give you the same height as that one. So I did that on this one. I went ahead and cut it off at the nine and three fourths. And you can see now, now it's gonna match. Okay, so with that, now what we're going to do is you're going to um, open your file folder and grab some, I just have some cotton muslin here, just, again, I don't know where I got this, but anything to give these two sides some support, some structure. 
because again this file folder is not heavy and wonderful it's really kind of cheap so anywhere you ever have a stress point you want to reinforce it because remember our goal is that this last for a generation we want to hand this down so we don't want things falling apart so um what i did and let me show you on this one I took, let me just, uh, let me just use this to hold that. So I ripped a piece, um, it's about an inch wide. I ripped it, again, a little bit longer than the file folder. Let me get up here. A little bit longer than the file folder. Now here's what you want to do. And this is going to be um, a sewing. I do sew here. Um, if you're not around a sewing machine, reinforcing it with heavier glue would be great. Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac, whatever, whatever you got. But since I'm going to be stitching this, what I want to do is use my glue stick on either side of the out of the outside score lines because if you put this glue in the middle then you're going to be stitching right into your glue and you don't want to do that so i just put a little run a little bit of glue stick just to hold it in place while you're stitching but i don't put it in the groove all right we'll just take this and lay it over now again doesn't even have to be straight because you're going to come in and mat this so nobody's going to see the edges of this fabric okay you do that on both sides then what you're going to do is you're going to take this to your machine and you're going to flip it over and the reason that you're flipping it over is so you can see where you're stitching okay this side you've just taken away the markers you can't see the score lines but on this side you can see your score lines and what you want to do on here is stitch inside your score lines that's your stitching and i'll show you on this one i did it in black so you could see it See how I kept my stitching inside the score lines. That's so everything will flip really easy and you've got a reinforced spine, if you will. So I did that in black so you could see. Uh, don't do it in black if you're doing light colors. I'm, I guess you can. Again, it's a design preference. You might be doing a vintage one and, and don't mind the black on the sides but it will show because we're not covering this so thread will show and then you'll notice there's another line um, and I have zigzagged this one this was the original fold line okay and I just zigzagged it to again give it a little more stability here we're going to be covering this and covering the back so that sandwich will help support this but if you want to you can just zigzag down there give it give it a little bit more structure okay so with that in mind and again we'll cut these off at the end don't worry don't worry about those now um now you're gonna have some design decisions to make because there's options we have plenty of options here this is really a clean slate so here's one design option that i knew i needed in here was one deep pocket so i cut another file folder up and this was actually a scrap of a front that i had from another project but i i cut it in gray so again you could see it but it is eight and a half inches long and i measured from here six inches down your pocket can be whatever size you want but it's got to fit in between the score lines oopsie there you go it's got to 
got to fit in between the score lines. However high up you want it to go is your choice. Mine's six inches high here. On one of them, I did another paper pocket down here because I knew I was going to have smaller tags that I wanted to fit. So I made a smaller pocket here. The first one, um, and this one, I actually did a lace pocket. You can see here, here's my top pocket. Then down here, I did a lace pocket. And just a word of wise, when you have a lace pocket, it's easier if you glue it to some tracing paper and then put it down so that your uh, tags don't get caught in the netting of the lace. Little, little trick somebody taught me a year ago. All right, so time to add a pocket here. And if you want, you can add one here. And I say time to, it's time to cut the pockets. Um, I also did a pocket here and it could be however high you want. And I'll show you here. See, here's a, here's a pocket here that I did. And I just brought it again right to the score line. You don't want to go over that score line with your pocket. And on this side, I did two pockets here. One a little bit shorter because I knew the, the tag would hang in there. And this one just a little bit larger. And you can see I did them both in vellum. You know, I always try and think about how my end user is going to use this. And how can I make it as easy as possible for them to get in the journal, to find things that they want to look for in the journal. So <clears throat> always <laughs> try and ink where they grab so that, I mean, when you get vellum up against that, sometimes it's hard to see. I've, I've seen people close the flap because they never did see the vellum there to put pocket, something in that pocket. So I've always made it a point to highlight where the thumb pull is for them. So they know what to do. Now you can do this out of paper if you want. Um, I Just a couple of um, design thoughts on here. Everything, you want it to look pretty, but there is kind of a method to your madness in if you just like to layer in things and that's a that's an eclectic kind of style where you could put green and blue and red and yellow and you know you you got a lot going on i want i want you to think about focal points for in it where do you want the eyes to go and I'd like to suggest that more muted papers, a more um, lighter kind of background, lets the objects in here shine a little bit more than the paper. So I'll talk about, I've got some thoughts about focal points in the end, um, in the end of the tutorial. So I don't want to get into that now. But I just want you to just notice as you put your papers in that they're, they're a backdrop for you because the star of the show is what's going to go in it. So you don't want anything competing too much with what you're going to be putting in. So think about that. Um, I also, um, at this point, once you decide kind of where your where your papers are going to go and again you can see here um, that i've just measured everything inside those score lines that's your measurements when you go to put this paper in um, you can see here that i didn't make it go up you don't need to go up on the file folder tab if you don't want to it looks perfectly fine coming straight down so you can 
you know, feel free to, to do that. This one I did line with the tab with the music notes, um, the old vintage music paper. Just, again, style preference, that's all. So when you get all of those done, then I want you to um, lay everything in as you're going to have it in your book. And I want you to, and again, for my sewing sisters out there, this is where you're going to stitch. If you don't want to sew it, you're just going to glue it. You're going to glue it down. Um, I've defined the edges here with some ink, um, inking your sides, just personal preference there. Now, after you, uh, let me... Let me talk to my sewing sisters for a minute. Once you get your papers and you're ready to stitch, I always put a little bit of glue stick down the center to just hold it in while I'm stitching it. But the, the choice that you have to make is which side do you stitch for real on and which side is going to be faux stitched. Let me explain the difference. If I, I've picked this side for real stitching. And if you see it and you know sewing machines, that's where I put it through the sewing machine. So I'm sewing it on like this. Okay, if I now am gonna put paper on the front side and I'm gonna now change it up to stitch it like this, you're going to have the other set of stitching go through to this page. And style preference, it, it, the odds of you lining it up exactly are so stressful. It's not worth it. So let me recommend if this is the real side to stitch on, okay, you stitch your papers down you're going all along the border as in one piece. Here's another piece to stitch. And then here's the third under here. Here's the third piece to stitch. You've caught all your pockets. All your pockets are in. Everything looks great. Now, for this side. I didn't do it on this, obviously, because I didn't want to cover up the design. But... If you're going to cover this, you can cut your pieces, just laying it down on paper, using this as a template, but stitch on this paper before you glue it on. It will fool the eye and it looks like you've sewn it on both sides when really you've just sewn on the fabric or paper under your sewing machine, not attached yet, and then glue it on. And it looks, that's why I call it faux stitching, because you really didn't stitch it to this, you glued it onto this. But the user doesn't know that. And it looks like, wow, she's a great sewer. <laughs> yeah, little trick. So, you are going to stitch all of your beautiful papers on. Now it's time to focus on the journal part. And this is <clears throat> simply a matter of <clears throat> excuse me, getting your papers. And again, these are just, you know, papers folded in half. And I put one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six pages in here. Um, and you could put more, but you don't want to get this too fat. So I only put six in. And the way that you set your eyelids is you take your pencil and you mark right at the top of where the paper comes in. And this one, uh, you 
can see there just a hair to where the paper comes in is where you want to set those eyelets. I just make a pencil mark, pencil mark on there, and I use my crocodile. I use my crocodile, and you're just gonna come in here. We'll go back to this one. I'm just gonna use this one as a sample. Let's see. You're gonna come in and let's let's just put a pencil mark here. Let's say there's your pencil mark. All right, fabric, you're in my way. So you're gonna look for your pencil mark and pop that hole in there. All right. So there you've got one you're going to do the same thing at the top and then you're just going to run your elastic through here you can see i just ran it through and tied it off left a little a little bit of room so that all my papers can just slide right in And now you've got the journal side done. And I do the journal side on the left um, fold because it'll cover when you shut your, your journal there. All right. So that's how you get your journal piece um, in there. Um, what else? Um, I, like I said, this, it, once you figure out your design of where the papers are going. If you want to use vellum, I, I usually use vellum for two reasons. One, I love the paper and I don't want to cover it. Or two, I want to highlight a photograph. And I'll show you that in a minute. Those are the two reasons that I'll use vellum. Um, let's see, we tie on the elastic. Yeah, and we're set to go. Let me finish up with <clears throat> just a, a thought about design for a minute. Um, just a couple of, I, I call them maybe quick trips or, or quick tips. Um, sometimes in our eagerness to make things pretty, we can tend to overdo. We can tend to overdo on what the of where our eyes should go and there's a lot of mentors that i have over the years who have taught me to <laughs> to keep their eyes focused where do you want their eyes to go and let's start here Let me clean this off i am um, I know um, Robin Dudley Howes, she is a really good one on focal point, that your eye moves from top left to bottom right. <laughs> what you can see, I've done the opposite. But here was my thinking, is because this is narrow, this was wider, that my picture can have more of a chance to, I don't have to cut that picture down to fit up in there, and then this, was going to have a hard time fitting on this down here. So I decided to flip it. You know, we can break the rules. But I want you to just notice the, the picture. It has a little bit of linen behind it. It's printed on fabric, which is another interesting element. I brought some roses in to the top of the corset to bring your eye there and then I had the idea as you open this up do you see that 
paper staring at you. <laughs> well, I, uh, now what am I going to do? So I decided to mimic the focal point. It has a different picture, same theme. I put the word journal on there and it's just a slide in. So this, all this does is going to slide under the bottom and it's made of linen. It's out of a sample book of linens. And I, I just glued it on. It was already stitched around. I stitched around the journal and then I covered paper over the backing of it just to make it a little more neat. But now you've got a focal point mimicked. And just for an impactful um, thing in your journals, uh, if, for those of you who have my journal, you'll notice that when you open the journal, I call this the impact page. I want some, I don't want just a pocket and tags that are thrown in. I use paper, I use lace, I use things to grab their attention to give them an impression of what is this journal going to be like. And you want the wow. You want the wow in the front page and you want the wow in the middle where it ties off. Those are the two places that I focus on to give the user a wow. Now, um, as you now have put your papers in, and I'll show you a couple of things how I how I stuffed this. I got my fun ephemera from the swap, Vicki Whitsit. So here you've got a big pocket that can go in here. It's got a title at the top I did want to highlight. But this one, the photo kind of takes center stage. And remember I told you vellum pockets are for pretty paper and for photos. So look how much more interesting that looks from a design perspective that makes you want to open that up and look at that photo. It's just so cute. So if you have family photos and instead of burying them in the pages in the book, maybe think about, oh, I've got four pictures, okay. So one, two, maybe I can put one in there. And then you've got the big pocket over here that you may do a tag with one of the pictures at the top. So it's, it's as they're reading about their Aunt Martha, maybe there's pictures of Aunt Martha growing up that you've got um, that kind of give this whole thing such a customized look uh, for somebody who's gonna hand that down. But I love it. I just, I love it. And I, like I said, I have two more. Um, one is gone, but I have two more in my shop. If you don't want to make it and you, you want one that I've already put together, um, you're welcome to go over and check that out. But other than that, um, I'm excited. I want to see what you guys have done. Um, thank you subbies for the suggestion of the tutorial. Anything else you want to see, let me know. Um, but that's it for today. And I've got other things in my craft list. I got to check off today. So thanks. Be good. Bye-bye.